Erev Tov Chavrim, I'm Stephen Benun. You're watching Israeli News Live. Again, another prophetic segment of our broadcast. Guys, the reason why I am doing a prophetic segment right in behind yet the four horse riders instead of going directly into the news is because of something that I discovered um, this morning that has startled me. Uh, the scripture that you're seeing on your screen now, this is from the book of Micah. Now, if you remember, this was something that I shared with you in the prophecies. Uh, we can go back and look in Nahum as well uh, as here in Micah. This was one of the very ones that I shared with you here uh, about the Assyrians and how that the let this land here would become desolate because of their own doings. Uh, I took Micah chapter 7 here uh, and we looked at this. There shall be a day when they shall come unto you from Assyria, even to the cities of Egypt, and from Egypt even to the river, and from sea to sea, and from mountain to mountain. And the land shall be desolate for them that dwell therein because of the fruit of their doing. Now in the KJV it says, Notwithstanding the land shall be desolate because of them that dwell therein for the fruit of their doing. And that clearly was the civil war conflict. When we look at Assyria, as I've stated in the past there, we're looking at modern day Syria and northwest uh, Iraq, that is where the, uh, the ancient Assyrian kingdom resided, was in both those countries, probably a little bit of Jordan, northern Jordan as well. And we have seen, especially in Syria and northwest uh, Iraq, uh, in Nineveh, places like that, because of the fighting that's been going on, the land has certainly become desolate. The refugees have gone all into different parts of Europe, uh, causing ha uh, havoc along the way. Uh, it has become a fearful place for, for especially Western Europeans that live in Germany, uh, France, Belgium, uh, etc., even uh, Great Britain. People living in these areas here, mo more so France and, and Germany, live in a tremendous amount of fear because there's been so many ISIS members that have come in with them. Uh, Zaman, the president of the Czech Republic, calls it an organized invasion. Uh, I can certainly see where he comes with on that. Uh, but anyway, as we look at this here, I was looking at what I was sharing you the other day from Micah and the four horse riders, and I began to thumb through Micah again. And I went into chapter 7 once more. And as I read on down, something caught my eye. And I want to share with you what that was and then show you exactly how the scripture goes. Notice here. Tend thy people with thy staff, the flock of thy heritage that dwell solitarily as a forest in the midst of the fruitful field. Let them feed in Bashan and Gilead as in the days of old. Now, if you look at KJV, it says, Feed thy people with thy rod, the flock of thine heritage. Well, we don't think of rod as a staff generally, it just depends on what your mind might perceive. But it is a staff that it's spoken of right here, okay, in the Hebraic language. And, but watch what goes on. This, this really got me, though, and, and you're going to see why, I think, in just a moment. As in the days of thy coming forth out of the land of Egypt, will I show unto him marvelous things. Now they try to justify why the word him is there, all right? But there is no justification. Aranu nifalot. The nifalot, marvelous, yes, you could translate it that, but it's really, it's wonder, wondrous things. Now, the odd thing is, as soon as I read it, when he says, it says here, as in the days of thy coming forth out of the land of Egypt, I see the comparison of Moses and his time frame, and then I see, will I show unto him marvelous things? 
or wondrous things would be the more correct word translation for nifalot. You can use marvelous, but wondrous things. And I read this. I looked it up real quick in Hebrew, knowing the word nifalot, knowing what nifalot means. I immediately could not help but wonder if this was in correlation with Exodus chapter 34, where God speaks of an incredible prophecy to the prophet Moses that has never been fulfilled. Uh, in fact, I happen to have with me, and I'm going to bring this up and share it with you here in just a moment. Uh, this, if you, if you ever wanted to, it's, it's kind of nice to have. Uh, this is called the, um, the uh, interlinear Hamash. Uh, it is, uh, I have the entire set uh, of the uh, Torah. And the uh, Chabad organization has actually translated this. I believe it's the Chabad organization that did this. They did a transliteration of the Old Testament. There are some things that, you know, I debate on as far as the the usage of the translations in there. But before I get there, I want to I want to continue on and read to you what it says here. All right, it says he will show unto him marvelous things. The nation shall see and be put to shame for all their might. All their might. Listen now. They shall lay their hand upon their mouth, their ears shall be deaf. They shall lick the dust like a serpent, like crawling things of the earth. They shall come trembling at their close places. They shall come with fear unto the Lord our God and shall be afraid because of thee. If you look on your screen right here, all right, all right it says right here, they shall come with fear unto the Lord our God. All right? There it is right there, the God's divine name, Yahuwah Eloheinu. All right? The Lord our God. Ipachado ve irau mimecha. Now, this is true even in modern Hebrew right here. Now, they use the word the, it's, it is the word you, but it's a very interesting way. It doesn't say necessarily, you know, that uh, they shall come with fear unto the Lord our God and shall be afraid because of you, but because of seeing you. Guys, the prophecy is speaking of Moses. I, I, I am at a loss of words when I saw this let's continue on who is God like unto you that pardoneth the iniquity and passeth by the transgression of the remnant of his people heritage he retaineth not his anger forever because he delighteth in mercy now could it be that it's the coming of the Messiah maybe but it's Here's why I think it's Moses. I'll share with you in just a moment. Watch what he says here. Again, verse 19. He will again have compassion upon us. He will subdue our iniquities. And thou will cast all their sins into the depths of the sea. Thou will show faithfulness to Jacob, mercy to Abraham, as thou hast sworn unto our fathers from the days of old. Now, I do believe it is the coming of Yeshua, the Messiah, Mashiach. I believe it definitely clearly speaks of him, but you have to understand, let's go back up here to verse 15. First, well, let's, let's look at verse 14 first. Uh, okay. Tend thy people with thy staff, the flock of thy heritage that dwell solitarily as a forest in the midst of a fruitful field. Let them feed in Bashan and Gilead as the days of old, as in the days of thy coming forth out of the land of Egypt will I show unto him marvelous things. So Micah's looking back to what happened in Egypt, and now he's saying, I'm going to show him marvelous things. Now, I noticed in the commentary in the King James, they said shows you know, it's, it says him, but it's implying them as what they believe. Show them marvelous things. Okay, you could say that. It's not written that way, but you can say that. The nation shall be, 
the nation shall see and be put to shame for all their might. In other words, all the strength that they have with their nuclear bombs and everything, they will be put to shame. They shall lay their hand upon their mouth. And their ears shall be deaf. They shall lick the dust like a serpent, like crawling things out of the earth. They shall come trembling out of their closed places. They shall come with fear unto the Lord our God and shall be afraid because of you. Now, it isn't a singular, mimecha. Because they see you. Now, could it be, it, you know, I, I leave open the door, it's the Mashiach that they're seeing. Who is God like unto you that pardoneth the iniquity and pacify the transgression of the remnant of his people? That's why I look at it being the Mashiach. But here's what gets me. Let's now go to Exodus 34. All right. Let's go to verse. We'll start at verse 9. And he said, If now I have found grace in thy sight, O Lord, let the Lord, I pray thee, go in the midst of us, for it is a stiff necked people, and pardon our iniquity and our sin, and take us for thine inheritance. Moses is asking God, even though they're stiff necked. And Israel is still stiff-necked today. You're making covenants with the, with the Vatican. Politicians have become nothing but a bunch of puppets. You're stiff-necked, but Moses asked for the pardoning of your iniquity and our sin. All right, well, what does he do? Who as is a God like unto thee that pardoneth the iniquity and pacify the transgression of the remnant of his heritage? Yes. All right, but watch how it's done. And he said, Behold, I make a covenant before all your people, thy people, your people, the same thing. I will do marvels. Okay, Nifalot. All right, let's go back up here to verse, what is it, verse? Okay, verse 15, right here. Nifalot. All right. What does he say? I will show unto him Arunu Nifalot. I will show unto him marvels like he's never seen before. And it's also dealing with the pardoning of the iniquity and the transgressions, okay? Jump over here to Exodus 34. See, before all your people I will do marvels or wonders such as have not been wrought in all the earth nor in any nation and at all the people among which thou art shall see the work of the Lord that I am about to do with thee that it is tremendous okay he's going to do it with who? with Moses Imcha says it right there Imcha I will do with you. Im with you. Ha. Kinorehu asha ani ose im ha. All right. So God is saying, I will show, I will show what I will do with you. Observe that which I am commanding thee this day. Behold, I am driving out before thee the Amorite, the Canaanite, and the Hittite, and the Perizzite, and the Hivite, and the Jebusite. Take heed to thyself, lest thou make a covenant with the inhabitants of the land, whether you, whether you go, lest they be for a snare in the midst of you. But you shall break down their altars and dash in pieces their pillars, and you shall cut down their uh, asherim. For you shall bow down to no other God, for the Lord whose name is jealous is a jealous God. Lest thou make a covenant with the inhabitants of the land, and they go astray after their gods, and do sacrifice unto their gods, and they call thee, and thou eat of their sacrifice. Now, here's the point, guys, in all of this. God was going to do marvelous things. Let me, let, me, let me take you here in KJV just for a moment. And let me share this with you the way they wrote it here. Verse 10, and he said, behold, let me find that on here for you, okay? I make a covenant before all thy people. I will do marvel such as has not been done in all the earth, nor in any nation. And all the people among which you are shall see the work of the Lord, for it is a terrible thing that I will do with thee. All right? 
terrible thing I will do with thee. Now, you could also call that awesome thing I will do with thee. All right? Now, that is you come down here. Now, here's the thing, though. It's nifolot. I want to read to you. Okay, let me just find it real quick here. Verse 10 in here. Do, 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 do. This, is, this is Exodus chapter 34, and we are going to verse 10. Okay, here it is right here. All right. Vayomir Hineni and that. Anochik. All right. Okay, but wait again. All right. I want you to see something here. I want to show you what they say here. When they take in here, in Nifalot, um, and when I read it in here, I knew immediately it was not translated right. Okay, there you go right there. Nifalot. In the Hamash, they translate it as distinctions. All right? Distinctions. Now, look right here. I just want you to see that just for a moment there. Pause your screen and go back and read what it says there. The word cannot mean wonders as it is usually does because the future history of the nation did not show greater miracles than God had done in Egypt at the Sea of Reeds, okay? That's why they don't even translate it properly here. They're trying to justify it. Failing to realize that clearly the Word of God shows in Revelation chapter 11 that Moshe will return. And because he does say there, he's going to do miracles here like he's never done before. Tremendous things, terrible things, judgment, in other words. Now, we find Micah says the same thing. As in the days of thy coming forth out of the land of Egypt, Will I show unto him marvelous things? Him. What's the him all about? It's because Moses comes back, guys. Moses comes back and God uses him to do these wonders. The nation shall see and be put to shame for all their might. Even though they have nuclear bombs in this day, they shall lay their hand upon their mouth. Their ears shall be deaf. What in the name of God is going to happen when those two witnesses come on the scene? They shall lick the dust like serpent, like crawling things out of the earth. They shall come trembling out of their closed places. They shall come with fear unto the Lord our God and shall be afraid because of you. Because actually, according to this here, because they will see you. Now, is that speaking of Moses? Is it speaking of the Mashiach? Is it because the Mashiach follows afterwards? That I'm not sure of. But one thing I do know, who is a God like unto thee that pardoneth the iniquity and passeth by the transgression of the remnant of his heritage? He retaineth not his anger forever because he delighteth in mercy. He will again have compassion upon us. He will subdue our iniquities and that will cast out all, all their sins into the depths of the sea. That will show faithfulness to Jacob, mercy to Abraham, as I have sworn unto our fathers from days of old. Guys, that is exactly what we see here happening in Exodus. What did he say up here? If now I found grace in thy sight, O Lord, let the Lord, I pray thee, go in the midst of us, for it is a stiff-necked people, and pardon our iniquity and our sin, and take us for thine inheritance. All right, now, one reminder here, in the midst of, of, of thinking of these scriptures right here, quickly, let's look at Daniel, and I'll close with this right here, Daniel 9, just for a reminder here. All right, I think it's around 20, verse 27, 20, let's see, where is it at now, therefore? Yes, verse 24, 70 weeks are decreed upon thy people and upon thy holy city to finish the transgression, to make a what? An end of sin, to forgive iniquity and to bring in everlasting righteousness and to seal the vision and 
and prophet and to anoint the most holy place. Hmm. Now, that's something, and to seal the vision and prophet and to anoint the most holy. What has the prophet got to do with it? You know what? I don't even know if King James records it like that. Let me quickly look at Daniel 9.24. Okay, prophecy is what they put. To seal the vision and prophecy is the way they put this in here. And to anoint the most holy. Ve, ve navi. Wow, that's kind of odd. Hmm. And to seal the vision and prophet. And to anoint, it appears to be more in the Hebrew language. I really never paid attention to that before, that it may be dealing with the two witnesses. I don't know. That's just something to think about. The point is, though, is the forgiving of the iniquity and the transgressions happens, and it occurs at the time in this, in this 70th week of Daniel. All right? This is the last week where this happens at. And what do we have here in Micah? The same thing. But great wonders are going to happen. And God promised that to Moses in Exodus 34, verse 10, and it's never been fulfilled, guys. Never. And this is one of the reasons why I'm, I strongly believe that what we are seeing, too, with Moses, when we, when we look back at the Scripture and you go to Exodus, for example, and we go to chapter 15 and you go to verse 1 right here, Then sang Moses and the children of Israel this song unto the people and spoke, saying, this is what he says, okay, Lemor. All right, or Vayom root, and and he says to them, Lemor, all right, Ashira Ladonai or Lahuha. I don't like saying the name because we don't know how to say it as of yet. Ashira Ladonai Kiga Aga O Susvekevora Mabeyom. Okay, he sings in the few, as future tense that he's going to get victory over the horse and over his rider and he's going to cast him into the sea. Now, the scripture does say, and later it does say, Miriam sings the song, but Miriam sings it as present tense and, and, and says that, yes, Pharaoh did go in with his horse and chariot as well. But clearly, it also speaks of a future event. It's in the future tense in Hebrew there. Asha. That's, I will sing. God's going to give him victory over the horse and the rider, just like what we saw, those horse riders coming yesterday. It's going to be very interesting, friends. Very, very interesting. God bless you. Thank you for watching. We'll be updating you on news. You can always check it out on Israeli News Live, our Facebook page there. There's news always being posted there continually. Check us out as well on Twitter. Uh, Israeli News Live at Stephen Danoon should be on your screen there in the bottom corner there. Uh, that's our Twitter channel there, and you definitely get some stuff that nobody gets to see otherwise. So go, go if you do do Twitter, you watch that. I kind of like Twitter for one reason, and that is I can find news and things that are breaking when nowhere else you can find it because I do search in multiple languages. I search in about five different languages. Uh, just to see what's going on, what's breaking at the time, and uh, to get information out to you guys as well. Shalom, God bless you, and good evening. Be praying for Israel. Uh, also, pray for uh, Pastor Paul Begley. I hear he was in an automobile accident. He's going to California to be with his wife and uh, their children out there, uh, but I hear he's banged up a little bit there, and just pray for his safe, safe travel going there and his... Uh, rapid recovery. I'm Stephen Benoon. You're watching Israeli News Live, a prophetic segment of our broadcast. Shalom and good evening.